I like about any kind of writing, um, but especially poetry, is that in the English language we've got 26 little squiggles that we make, and with that an entire world is possible. Think of Emily Dickinson, and she rarely left her area where she lived, Amherst, Massachusetts, but yet she travelled the universe in her 1775 poems. At one point she says, um, speaking about the soul, she says, the soul has bandaged moments, it dances like a bomb abroad. Who was saying that in the 1860s? She was, possibly responding maybe to the American Civil War, but um, who knows? It's just extraordinary what you can do with these little shapes. <laughs> I started writing when I was about 11. I'm sure loads of us did. The Irish uh, school curriculum is filled with poetry, so we were learning poems off by heart in Irish and in English from the age of five. Maybe two poems a week in both in those languages, um, right until I left school. Poetry is very definitely um, part of the Irish curriculum and the psyche, and I think that, that doesn't mean that everybody likes poetry. Poetry is very definitely in the national psyche. Some major political figures in Ireland were poets and major moments of Irish political history were captured in poetry. So I am working actually on writing a poem, or a series of poems in broken Irish and then translating them into broken English. I am self-conscious about my grammar in Irish. Partly that's a story of my life. I have good Irish, but I'm nervous about my grammar. But um, it's a story too about a place that had their language taken from them. And so it's an old story of ours. There's an anxiety, and I know this is true for many places where language has been taken, and then people are in the process of learning, relearning their language and reintegrating it. And certainly I'm in that situation. I love the language. I speak, I have a, an intuitive feel for it because I've spoken it since I was so young, but my grammar leaves a lot to be desired. There's a phrase in Irish, is far gaelga brishta na berla clishta. You can hear the rhyming of it, brishta, clishta. It means um, broken Irish is better than clear English. What's the most challenging side for me um, is that it requires time. And it, for me, the kind of poetry that I like to write is the personal lyric, which isn't just about me, but I suppose it is using a, a personal narrative to open up the question uh, that the poem is exploring. And that requires vulnerability and to think how much am I willing to say here. And lots of that stuff is taken out or discreet. A person might read something and think, oh, that's not about Padraig at all, and it's not. Somehow I've had to break myself to put myself into it. And so I feel the, um, I feel the vulnerability of it. I think each art form is seeking to open up a door into the human condition or to the human emotion or to human fragility or human power. And um, I would hope that poems are doing that too. Uh, you're right, there are so many, but uh, so I'll mention a few. So Lorna Goodison, she's extraordinary. She's just coming to the end of her term as Poet Laureate of Jamaica. And she has been writing for um, 40 years. And she's overwhelming and brilliant and moving. Um, and she has these titles that sound like old hymns that nobody ever wrote. Um, I shall light a candle of understanding in mine heart and it shall not be put out. It's one of those titles. And then another one, um, For my mother may I inherit half her strength. <laughs> Beautiful. Another um, person of Jamaican origin is Raymond Antropus, British Jamaican writer, deaf guy, and he has been, um, he's got a book called The Perseverance, which is overwhelming and genius. And there's sign language throughout it as well as um, written poetry. And on that line, there's Ilya Kaminsky, who's written a book called Deaf Republic, which is a, a myth, it's his second book. Um, he is, I think, already in many people's minds, the, a person to whom the Nobel Prize will be given. Poetry is one door that opens us up to that great central question of what does it mean to be alive? Maybe why are we alive? How do we be? What do we do? Um, or just pausing on a small moment and looking at a small moment through the lens of a poem or through the lens of a piece of um, painting or film. Um, I suppose each of them are doing something similar. I suppose I should say that some of the purpose of, I don't know what the purpose of art is, but something that should be embraced when, the, when it comes to the question of art is uh, an increasing ease with feeling lost. 
I read through all of Emily Dickinson's poetry a few years ago, 1775 poems, and for most of them I was lost. And yet, after a while, I realised that something had gotten into me, like a scent or a virus, uh, with her language, with her strangeness, with her curiosity. And that was a, a great thing to happen. And so I, um, I think it can be a good thing to take away the idea that if I don't get this piece of art, this poem, I'm stupid. Schools have usually taught people to make that equation. If this, then you're stupid. And I just think, no, you don't get it. Maybe it's a crap poem, or maybe it's an interesting poem, or maybe the whole point is to be lost. Maybe that's the purpose of the piece of art, is to bring you in to the shared experience of lostness that this person is feeling, and therefore to listen to that, and then you have this profound conversation between where it lands in you and the artist. I'm always circling around projects. There's some poems I've been waiting 20 years to write, and they're just always there. Uh, I, you can't capture them, you can't tame them. They're just there waiting to be um, given an opportunity to land and there's been a few times when something's landed and I know like I need to be rude and excuse myself from wherever I am to write on a phone, a sick bag on an airplane, whatever the hell is there. Um, it's not always when you're sitting in front of your journal. I'm doing a PhD in poetry at the moment and um, that involves 65% uh, of the work is to write a new piece and then 35% of that is to do a critical engagement with it. So that's great, it's from the Department of Theology there, so a theological creative writing project, it's delicious. There's a project coming out led by David Toombs of University of Otago and Jamie Reeves who's based in Sarum College in Britain. It's a project that's looking at uh, sexual torture in times of violence. I was asked to write some poems for that. It's particularly looking at the idea that Jesus of Nazareth might have been a victim of sexual violence in a particular line that says in one of the gospel accounts of his torture and, and murder that says he was taken to the Praetorium, which um, there is some historical evidence that um, men were raped by soldiers in the Praetorium, men who were about to be crucified. There's um, a book of theological essays and some artistic pieces. So I've written 14 new Stations of the Cross, thinking of moments, small moments in our life, phoning the Samaritans, um, trying out a new pronoun, um, dressing in the way you wish to dress, um, beginning to believe in yourself, um, yeah, being disappointed. I'd be nervous about the word particularly because I, I don't know that there's any possibility of comparison. But one of the things that I think is important about poetry at this time in history is because poetry is an art of language and, and looking at the creative possibilities of language and the revealing possibilities of language and the, cre and the depicting possibilities of language. And there seems to be an increase in a certain form of uh, bluster in public political leadership and in industry leadership. And it's nice sometimes to look to an art where you can um, look at a line or even a word or a placing or a line break and wonder what is that? And if you ever have the opportunity to hear the poet read or to, um, to, to read something that they've written about the poem or to just to engage in any group of friends sitting around talking about a poem, it's delicious to be part of a project where people know language matters because in so many situations people seem to be demeaning the possibility of language and language is where evil begins. People, uh, well I suppose the imagination is where evil begins and then it comes out initially in language. We begin to talk about things and people and situations in a way that um, commodifies them or justifies the mistreatment of them. And so language always matters and it's important to be part of an art form that recognises that.